Okay, welcome back. Let's talk about resisting the devil because that's what we were talking about. Jesus uh, gave us a little insight that even when a person is delivered from a demon, that is they actually had a demon on the inside of them and that demon goes out, there's, that doesn't mean that you're permanently delivered. Why? Because uh, God will allow uh, that demon to come back to you and into you. In fact, he'll allow that demon to bring seven other spirits more wicked than himself if, if what? If the person allows it, okay? And so we want to stay balanced in our understanding of the uh, sovereignty of God. Yes, God is sovereign, but yet God has given us a free will and given us responsibility. And the scripture makes that abundantly clear when we look at all of the Bible and not just picking out little uh, preferential verses that support our our personal uh, pet doctrines, okay? So, um, you know, it is amazing that, um, that God would deliver somebody from a demon who has allowed themselves to be possessed by a demon. I talked about that already. That shows the mercy and the power of God. But even more so, it shows how God respects the free will that he's given every person to make a statement as Jesus has made, as we've read previously, where a demon could come out of a person and then that demon could come back to that person uh, and bring in seven other spirits worse than himself. What was the problem? The problem, the fault can't lie with God. The problem has to lie with the individual. Okay, and that's the, always the problem. Uh, the devil's wandering about this earth, scripture says, seeking whom he may devour. Uh, but it's our responsibility to resist him. And I'm speaking about Christians, but you could also apply this to non-Christians as well. Um, God said early on the Bible uh, to, was it Abel or Cain? Uh, regardless, he said, sin is crouching at the door. And its desire is for you, but you must master it. You see, God's allowing that sin to crouch there. God's allowing people to be tempted. Why? Because he's testing everybody. He wants to, 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 to find out who is going to follow him, who's going to follow the devil, who's going to be qualified and worthy to be in the future kingdom, and who's not going to be worthy. Well, all of us at one time were unworthy because we all decided to, like sheep, go our own way. But under the influence of the Holy Spirit and the gracious drawing of God, we, um, you know, turned to him and he forgave us and, you know, the rest of the redemption story. Now, even as Christians, we still have to resist the devil because we're not immune to his attacks. Um, People, you know, debate certain questions about can a Christian have a demon and so forth? Uh, can a Christian be demon-possessed? I don't believe a Christian could be demon-possessed, but I do believe a Christian could be demon-harassed. You know, you're looking at one, and you know, I don't mean that, that harassed. I'm saying we're all harassed, okay, by the devil. If you're not harassed by the devil, then you're not a human being, and you're not a Christian. The devil's going to go after you uh, to, to lie to you. Or do you ever get lies, you know, in your mind? Do you ever get uh, thoughts that you know are um, thoughts that are not pleasing to God in your mind? Do you ever face temptation? It's the devil. If it's not the devil personally, it's one of all those demons that are working for him. You know, he's got his minions that are out there doing his bidding. All right, so, so we're all facing that. What should we do? Here's what the Bible says we should do. I'm going to read to you from 1 Peter chapter 5, okay, verses 8 and 9. Paul, or Peter writes, be of sober spirit, be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. But, here's the but, resist him firm in your faith, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished by your brethren who are in the world. And so our responsibility is to resist the devil. Now, here's the question. How do you resist him? Do you get your baseball bat and say, okay, when I see that demon, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him a, you know, no. Do you scream and shout and do quote unquote spiritual warfare, pulling down the demons in the atmosphere, something that we have no precedent for in the Bible? No. You have to understand the devil's, practically his only weapon, is the weapon of lies, right? I mean, what did he do with Adam and Eve in the garden? He told them a lie. Has God said, so he's, caught, he's trying to get them to doubt. Has God said, Eve, that, you know, blah, blah. And then he contradicts it. Because you know, she says, God says we shouldn't 
eat from or touch, you know, this tree. Oh, you will surely not die. See, lying. What did Jesus do when he tempted, or what did Satan do when he tempted Jesus? We know about the temptation of Christ. He, he tried to get Jesus to, to believe something that was not true. Go ahead, jump off the, the, the temple uh, here because the, the scripture says, and he twists the scripture, uh, God will give his angels charge over you and so forth. So nothing. Jesus said, oh, no, 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 but it is also written. So I'm going to bring a balance to you. Don't try to twist the word of God to me, Satan. And so that's the key to resisting the devil, knowing what God has said, believing what God has said, and acting upon what God has said. That's spiritual warfare. That's scriptural st spiritual warfare. That's how you resist the devil. So anything that the devil is suggesting to you, evaluate it. What does the Bible say? And then say, devil, no, the Bible says this. God commands this. When you face temptation, think, what does God say? Should I yield to this temptation or should I not? God says resist this temptation. God says be holy. So I decide to be holy. Knowing, believing, and acting upon the word of God, that is biblical spiritual warfare for which we have precedent in Old and New Testaments and which we can find the general principle throughout you know, other places in Scripture. You got it? Okay, I believe that you have got it. And that's good to know. So let's just practice what the Bible teaches. All right? All right. Now, there's something really good coming up here. Um, something about those who are truly related to Jesus Christ. When I first read it, I was stunned by it. And it's still somewhat stunning to me, but it's right there. And we're going to talk about that uh, the very next time that we get a chance to talk about, all right? So keep reading your Bible, stay with me. I'll see you next time.